Welcome everybody, it's Thursday the 28th of February 2024 and this is a webinar with Sarah Howe on organising residential trips to Paris. Uh, we're due to run for about an hour, don't worry at all if you have to go before then. Um, we do encourage people to join our association. If you're not already a member, please consider joining. If you are a member, could you write in the chat to say you're a member and encourage others to do that? And that goes for people who are um, individual members, group members, but also corporate members. If you run a, a company which deals with travel, then it may be that you'll be interested in joining AWO as a corporate member. Um, we have... Uh, events uh, which are advertised on webinars um sorry webinars and there's a link to our webinars um and we've got some coming soon i've done a big qr code there which would take you to our events page and ones that we've got obviously we've got today sarah uh next week we've got a webinar with mathilde bouquin on raising attainment at gcse she's part of the harris fed group and they're giving us two parts part one is going to be looking at receptive skills of listening and reading that's next Tuesday. Um, and then the Thursday, the 14th of March, Julien Violette is going to talk about the productive skills. And we were thinking particularly for people who are getting ready to take, you know, to um, teach their, or they're teaching their year 11 GCSE, they would appreciate those. So they're really generously offering that. Um, and then it's not too late to book a place to the for the AWL Language World, which is next week. I've just booked my ticket to go there, uh, Friday 8th and 9th of March. So I know it's, it, the tickets have gone really well on that. We've got some really good speakers. So that's next Friday and Saturday. So especially if you live around the Midlands, it's very easy for you to get there. Um, and then tomorrow I'm going to the Spanish school in London to have a look around there because we're going to be holding our June event there on Saturday, the 15th of June. Uh, we're still trying to think about particular things we're going to do. AI will feature definitely. And perhaps something which is on the new GCSE according to which subject you teach. So um, there's our summary of our etiquette, but um, I'm about to pass over to Sarah to speak. She's uh, head of MFL at Newstead Wood School. That's a girls' grammar school in Kent, teaches mainly French, uh, but also has German and Spanish. And look, also currently teaching herself Japanese. She's very clever. She's also a good mathematician, which is why I was <laughs> delighted that she offered to be our treasurer for the AWL London Committee. So she's particularly welcome for that. So this is the description that you've read of the webinar. I won't read it aloud to you, but that's why you've decided to come along to this because you're interested in taking children to um, to to countries. We really do think, as an association and as language teachers, I know that this really is the the reason that we we, we teach languages. So it's great that we, we you know we like to promote that. We did it a lot in our January event. We had lots of sessions on it. Sarah was down to speak at that event, but actually there was so much packed into it that she offered not to speak at the event, but to do this webinar separately. So I'm really grateful to you, Sarah, for doing that. We've already set up a web page. There's an address there. There's a code. And by the way, all of this you'll have um, afterwards. I'll send a copy of this um, PDF. This is a PDF to everyone, so you'll have all these links. And we thought we'd have this page where we'll have a link to the recording, also to any of the chat, the ideas that anybody has had. And we'll use that as a, you know, as a base for updating any information that we have about trips to, to, to Paris. It's so often a subject of conversation on social media, on Facebook and so on. So I'm now going to pass over to Sarah. Please feel free, as I say, to use the chat, write any questions. Um, and we can pause. We're deliberately going to pause after every section to say to people, um, have you got any particular ideas or anything that you could offer? OK, let's do that. Can we all see that? Yes, you can see. Yeah. Lovely, we'll thank get you. rid of the weird thing. Can you see that? Oh, I have to get rid of the button again, don't I? Uh, hide. Is it that one? No, it's all gone. Perfect. So let me, uh, let's start off with what I've got on the screen here. So I've actually got um, a selection of photos that I had taken on my previous trips to Paris. So if you want to use the chat or if you want to just un unmute yourselves and say if you recognise any of the places on there. Um, great. Some of them are a little bit obscure. <laughs> That's all well, welcome up to Elizabeth for Le Louvre. Yep. <laughs> Very good. Steve has another mark. <laughs> I can't see the chat. Let me see. If I can I'll, see you. I'll tell you. No, I've, I've got the chat on here. And I've got, got working with it. Go on. 
the mirror, yeah. Elizabeth Paris. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, oh, lovely to see you, Jennifer. It's lovely to see all of you, but it's nice to see a particular Jennifer Wozniak Rush, La Tour Eiffel, Le Louvre, L'Opéra, and Disneyland. It was not Disneyland. Oh, isn't it? It's not Disneyland. Oh, oh. That one's not Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think it might be? <laughs> I think I know. Is, is, the, uh, is it Parc Asterix? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Parc Asterix. Lovely. And yeah. the dome, that dome, that's Les Invalides, is it? Yep. So it's going up, looking up from, from, from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Quite nice. I quite like the Tour Eiffel one, actually, the one with our feet. <laughs> it's a little bit artistic. Oh, I see. You see it? <laughs> yes. I noticed that. Yeah, um, that was when it was really wet last October. We went last October, it was really, really wet. So we were up on the second, on the second, on the second floor. And then I was like, oh, let's take a picture. I took a picture of our feet. I do. Also, they always, I love that where you come to the the clock. Mm. Yeah, and that's that's really not. I always like that picture as well. So that's all cool. I think that's all of them, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, just a bit about who I am, and also um, Helen and our experiences with running trips. So, obviously, I'm head of languages at Newstead Wood. Um, it's a school in the southwest of London, going into Kent. Um, my experience is I've run now the. I've run three trips to Paris as a trip leader, um, two at Newstead. So I've been, I've done it for the last two years and I'm in the process of running the third, the third trip uh, with our current year 10. So they'll be in year 11. Um, I ran my first trip in 2016. And that was also a trip to Paris. Um, and I've accompanied loads of residential trips as well. So I've been to Aachen, to the Christmas markets, uh, been on a music tour uh, with, with, with my previous school to uh, Bonn and the Rhine Valley. So that was quite nice. And I have been to Normandy on a residential as well. So in terms of where I've been um, with the job, I've been quite quite a lot of places. Um, Helen has obviously said that she's uh, run a few study visits to Paris as well for year 11 and sixth form uh, from 2016 to 2020 as well um do feel free to share your experiences ideas questions in the chat we can sort of stop as on, as we go along and answer any questions you might have along the way as well um so in terms of what i wanted to cover today or this evening um i've split it into six different bits so ideas of where to visit um so we've got lots of ideas on the next few slides um admin things that you need to think about uh how we're going to promote your trip um, what you need to do for your information evening or your meeting uh, with parents, students alike, uh, doing the actual planning, ready, getting ready for the trip, and then also having to think about communication during the trip as well. So um, in terms of itinerary, uh, where to visit, obviously there's two ways of getting there primarily. So primarily going there by coach or going by Eurostar and then transport and walking. Um, I personally like to go on the coach, um, so then we can stop off at places along the way. Um, for us, it's more convenient because we're quite close to Dover or wherever we need to go. So the, the, the travel journey, the travel's not so bad for us. Um, obviously, we need to think about, I can't see what's going on here. I can't see that. There we go. Um, so in terms of where you, if you're traveling by coach, it's quite uh, advantageous. So you can plan in advance. You can see with the coach driver where you want to stop pick up points in terms of traveling around Paris it's quite useful as well um, so you don't have to necessarily rely on public transport Eurostar you've also got your benefits with that as well it's a lot quicker to get there it's comfortable you can stretch your legs that kind of thing um, but obviously you need to consider if you're using public transport like the metro uh, walking time to go from one place to another as well um, also things that you can think about are uh, places that you don't have to pay versus places where you have to pay for entry. Um, some require you to book in advance, some you just have to turn up on the day. So the Eiffel Tower, you do have to turn up on the day and then just buy a ticket and then go up. Um, I think, yeah. And then when I said traveling by coach, uh, we've got a few stopping off places. So obviously you saw a picture of Vimy Ridge. Uh, we do like to stop up at Vimy Ridge on the way there. So that is um, actually uh, the site of a Canadian memorial, so the Canadian soil. So you, there's a memorial there. You can see right across its beautiful views. Um, and I think you can see like the coal, they're like the coal, um, I can't what they're called, but basically it's it's quite sorry. You can see what the coal heaps in the sort of background as well. Um, so you've got that. 
and if they can go through the trenches. So there are some trenches outside. So you can see actually in the picture, the bottom picture on the slide is a picture of um, some of my students going through the trenches when they've walked through um, outside and they actually get to go through an underground tunnel as well. So they, they actually turn off the lights so the students can actually see how dark it is. Um, and I really like this as well because they can do tours in English and in French. Um, so they do speak with their Quebecois accent, which is quite nice for the students to be exposed to um, as well. Um, on the way back um, on my trip that I normally do, we through, go to um, the Chocolaterie in La Chelle. Um, it's a paid through tour. Uh, it's a paid tour, and they talk you through the production um, of the chocolate that they they sell, they manufacture and sell as well. So they obviously ship their cocoa beans back from I think it was Ecuador. I think they said. And they talk about like the production and how they how they manufacture it all in French. And it's really good for the kids just to follow follow that and sort of test their test their French a little bit as well. Um, and then there's obviously uh, a trip to the hypermarket gives them an example gives them the chance to go and spend the rest of their spending money on the way back home. So that's quite nice as well. Um, I've also done in terms of using the coach. Uh, you've got sights at night, so you can do you can see all the, the lights. Um, the kids love the sparkling Eiffel Tower on the hour, every hour at night. So they get very excited about that. Um, and then the, also with a coach, you can also go to like Versailles. So we do, a, I do a day in Versailles where they have a look at the market um, and they have a look and they visit the palace as well. Um, and then obviously you've got your uh, theme parks. So you can go to this and then I prefer Park Astor. It's a little bit more cultural for them and they tend to enjoy it a lot more. Uh, less busy depends what days you go on but it tends to be a lot nicer in terms of the rides you don't have to wait so long um okay uh then i've just looked at monuments so you've got a nice little picture of uh the notre dame uh when it was open uh and then you've got lots of different places that you can go to so obviously tour eiffel i've mentioned before you can turn up don't need to worry about booking in advance uh you obviously have a payment you can walk up to the second floor and then you can pay extra to go up in the lift to the top um, obviously depending on what the weather's like as well. So the last time I was there, um, they couldn't go up to the top floor because it was pouring down rain, it was very high winds. Um, so we got up to the second and then managed to get back down without losing anybody, so it was great. <laughs> um, I have done Tour Montparnasse in the past. Uh, it's a different uh, way to get sort of a big over panoramic view of Paris. Um, I think there was one picture in my original slide that I had a really nice sort of night view um, including the Eiffel Tower. So it's quite nice for the kids to go up there and have a little look around as well. Um, less busy and you can go up at certain times, I believe. Um, Art de Triomphe is another one you can book in advance. I think there's a group ticket that you can get in advance or you can just go and have pictures taken outside there by the massive roundabout and get confused with all the traffic going around the roundabout. Um, so yeah. Uh, Sacre Coeur is obviously free up in Montmartre. Uh, you can send the kids through, they can walk through and they can just get to, get, get a real feel for that. Um, I tie that in with Montmartre, walking around Montmartre and having a look at the shops, cafes and the and the artists that are in the um, square at the top as well. So that's quite nice. Um, and then obviously with Notre Dame, I think it's currently close until around December 2024. So 20, December this year. Um, but you can, when we went in October, um, we were allowed to, we could like walk around it and they had like lots of boards with like um, an exhibition up on there as well. Um, Helen has written in my notes, when open, use church volunteers to give talks and they are free, but you can give a donation as well. Uh, Ponteon, I haven't been myself, but there was a suggestion from um, Helen. Um, I did have a look, you can book in advance and it's a group, there's like a group booking for that. And then La Défense, you can obviously La Grande Lache as well. Um, and then one thing that's actually quite useful for students to see like all of Paris is to go on a boat trip on the Seine. Um, so I have done both uh, Bateau Mouche, which is probably the most popular one. And then you've also got Bateau Présien, which is on the other side of the river, on the same side as the Eiffel Tower. Um, we found that when I went on Bateau Mouche, we didn't really get understand or we didn't know what we were seeing because there was... There was someone talking on, I don't know if it was talking or pre-recorded thing on the boat, but you couldn't hear what was going on. So we were all just on our phones on Google Maps trying to work out what we could see. Um, so this time I did try Bateau Parisien, which had come with these headsets. 
and you can set to whatever language you like and you can actually just listen um, to commentary. So you can always encourage your students to listen to it in French if they're not so bothered or if they have to speak another language that they want to understand a little bit more, they can always listen to another language as well. So yeah, so monuments there. Uh, we also have a bit of shopping. So obviously I've talked about Montmartre already. Uh, Versailles has a lovely market and uh, the shops that go around it. So it's quite nice for free time uh, for them to go around and have a look and see what's available. Uh, some of them like to just go normal shopping like they would normally go shopping back in the UK, which defeats the point, but it gets them out and practicing their French, which is the reason why, why, why we're doing this in the first place. Um, and then when I was talking to Helen, we talked about different other, other different places as well. So we've got, there's an underground area by the Louvre um, and apparently it's good for bad weather. So if it's bad weather, <laughs> you can uh, go and have a look there. Uh, Rue Mouffetteur is another one uh, that was recommended by Helen. So you can start at the top. Uh, so a teacher, oh, so you can put a teacher in the Café Delma. I believe that's what, it, I think that's what yeah, the notes I, say. I only reckon any sort of shopping, I find a place where a teacher, well, it's it's the rule we always have. Isn't mm. it? It's always a place where you're sitting so they know where to come if there's a problem. So yeah, we just start at the top, Café Delma, we can sit there and then they know that you're there yeah. while groups go down and look at it. Um, so there's lots of things like that. It's like a village street. Um, it is closed Sunday afternoon and Mondays. Uh, Bastille Market's another nice place uh, it's on Sundays. And then you can then, in terms of the meeting point, there's Metro Richard Lenoir that you can sort of meet. I think there's a meeting point. Um, I put in parks, quite nice for a picnic lunch. Uh, so we'll talk about food a little bit later in the presentation. Um, it's quite nice as a pit stop, a lunch, or even just a walk. So we went through Tuileries um, from Le Louvre, walking up to Musée d'Orsay, where was which was one of the stops that we 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 took on our uh, one one of the days, and we actually had our picnic lunch in the park and it was quite nice weather um and you can also point out so actually it was quite funny um i think there was a big demonstration it might have been for um palestine um pro uh, obviously yeah so it was for palestine and all the stuff that's going on in israel at the moment so you could hear everyone on the place de la concorde and you could and i was pointing down towards the Arc de triomphe because they could just about see the Arc de triomphe um, but we could also hear the demonstrations happening as well. And obviously my ethics is like, oh yeah, I was like, no, we're not going. But, you know, it's it's quite nice for them to see. And that linked in really well with what we were talking about at A-level in our year 13 class when we were talking about um, demonstrations and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's, it all links in quite well. Um, right. And then we have lots and lots of ideas for uh, museums or looking at the arts, um, that kind of thing. Um, I won't go into too much detail about all of them, but the ones that I have done uh, myself, um, two years ago we did Les Invalides, so looking at Napoleon's tomb, a bit of history there. There is the Musée de l'Armée next to it. Um, I don't think it's free entry. I think you have to pay for both of them and you get it as a ticket. Um, so it's quite nice. It gets them to walk around a little bit um, and a little bit of history around that as well. So I found out about Napoleon's, I think he's he's buried in about seven different coffins and they're all made of different materials. So it's quite interesting. Um, and we just found that out by just walking around and looking at all the different um, um, exhibit parts of the exhibition as well. Uh, Louvre, I don't think I've taken students in, but we've just looked at the pyramid outside and there's, there's a great opportunity for them to take photos. Um, they like to put their own pictures on Instagram and all that kind of stuff of them trying to, you know, point at different parts of the parts of the parts of the pyramid etc um centre pompidou i don't think i've done before but it's quite nice on the outside for them to see the architecture it's different architecture for them to look at um i did musée d'orsay last time i went um it was quite nice um sort of a couple of hours in there give them free reign we had a meeting point right down the bottom by the i think it was the statue of liberty right down the bottom so they could meet us there and then um they recommended that they went all the way up to the top to see the clock and then obviously all the different um, exhibitions going around there as well. Uh, the previous time I also went to Langerie to look at uh, Monet's Water Lilies. There were lots of other quirky exhibitions there that change every now and again. So that's worth having a look at, particularly if you've got students that are, that are arty and really interested in that, in that kind of thing as well. Um, 
in the very first trip I ran, we went to Palais de la Découverte, which was a science museum. And with my background in maths, I got very excited um, because there is a pi room to the number pi. And they had, uh, it's a circular room, obviously, and you've got all the digits of pi going around the room. So we got very excited to see that, that, that kind of thing. So yeah, I was teaching maths at the time. So the, uh, the students were very happy about that as well. Um, and then there were lots of other ideas there um, when I was talking to Helen about this. And yeah, it's just generally really interesting. There's some really nice ones that are free. So you've got the Cana Valley, uh, Museum of Paris, that's free. Petit Palais is also free. And then Victor Hugo's house is also free. Um, but I mean, a lot of these places you could probably see from the outside, particularly L'Opera is quite nice to look at on the outside. Um, we've gone past in the coach and it's just quite nice to point it out to, to the kids as well. Um, is this a nice place to stop for any I questions? I was going to say, if people, um, you know, obviously there are people who are planning things or who have done things. Are there other places that anyone would add to that or any of those that you'd say are particularly, particularly good? I mean, I, I would just say that Munda Lingua mm -hmm. is by the Luxembourg Gardens. That was found by, found by one of my sixth formers who just loves linguistics. Mm -hmm. So she found it on a site. Um, and that is really, really good. Um, especially if you had, I mean, what we did was to split up the group between the sixth formers and those who were really keen on language per se, and then the others went to the Pantheon at the same time. Um, but to organise it so that you can have somebody speaking in, and they will speak in very simple French about language, it was a really, really good find there. And I'm going there at Easter for the fourth time, I really just for me to go and see it. Um and then school groups getting free entry to the Louvre. I I have had that. I'm th the only thing I'm not sure because this is four years since I've done it, is that um, sometimes it's free for students from the European Union. So I think yeah. it's just checking on that. Um, cause yeah, it's worth checking because I think um, when we went to Versailles, they had the gardens, and sometimes the gardens are open, sometimes they're not open. If they're not open, you have to pay to get in. But they go, oh, if you're a European, if you if if you're a French school then you can get in for free, otherwise you'd have to pay. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, do you want do you want to anybody can open their video or audio actually and join in? Jennifer, is that recently you've got free entry for your school group at the Louvre? Because that would be good to know. Uh no, uh, last time I did it was uh the the last time we went to the Louvre was just before COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh and this time I'm taking my attendance to Paris in June uh, and I've emailed them and I'm waiting for a reply. So as soon as I get a reply, I could email you, uh, Helen, so then you can add it as one of the comments on the page if you want. Because we thought actually having a list of places and then just mm. information as at and then people can look look through that. Because, I mean, I think the Louvre is particularly good because it's got lots of toilets in it as well. We'll come to that later on, but that's a very <laughs> big part of going to Paris. <laughs> isn't it and the other thing if you're doing sixth form particularly going to the le memorial and seeing le mur des justes um mm. even if you're just looking at the you know the, the wall of all of the, all the names of the people who helped to help people to escape um it's really good but the the, the memorial itself is is a really very moving place to go to and especially if you're doing the occupation with sixth formers mm. Anybody else wants to? Oh, Kirsten says there are nice shops around the back of Sacre Coeur. Yeah, they are. And the, the children like those. They love them. Anything with tat, they love. And I love that. Yes. <laughs> I'm the one who buys it. When people say, who buys all this stuff? It's me. I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And has anyone, oh, yes, has anyone done the catacombs? I haven't done the catacombs. Mm. It's just never something which has really appealed to me. Being on anybody? But apparently, I mean, I'm told that children really like it, mm. like them. So, and again, probably good if it's not so not so nice weather. Mm. Okay. By the way, Kev, Kevin just said that he'd um, he's been recently to Paris, and you you can get free walking tours, can't you? Where people pay whatever they want at the end. Um, I haven't done that with students, and he wasn't saying he's done it with students, but it's. Getting a French person to take you around, I do, I do like that idea, and um, hence mm. why I mentioned about the Notre Dame. That mm. was really, oh, you obviously feel desperately sorry for people 
um, who've been involved with Notre Dame, but there was such pride from the person. We've had one woman who would take us around and point things out. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll carry on. Okay, so um, I've put cultural and eating out, and then we had the other cultural activities. So we've got the Musée du Parfum à Fragonard, uh, which Helen highly recommends, and then you could also take them to the theatre. Uh, Salouchette is is one that you could probably think about as well. Um, in terms of eating out, obviously it depends, you know, how 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 you decide to do it. Um, uh, I I tend to do mine through a company. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning, thinking about doing it both either planning it yourself or planning it through a company. Um, obviously, if you're doing it through through a company, they obviously help you out with book, booking out places and things like that as well. Um, Considering restaurants that take large groups is obviously uh, a big thing. So if you're taking up, so I've taken up to 40 students, I'm going to try and take 50 this year. So obviously trying to find other people, uh, other, other places that will take that many students is obviously a, a bit of a tricky thing to do. So things that have worked well for me in the past are places like Flunch. Uh, so we went to Flunch in Bourbourg last, last time, which was quite nice. And they can pick what they want. Um, obviously, they can obviously ask what's in things, etc., um, local creperies um, that do fixed tariff menus. So you pay a fixed amount, you get a galette, which is your savoury crepe, and then you get like a, a dessert crepe afterwards and they get a drink and that's quite good value for money to go out for dinner, um, which is quite nice. Um, I've tried the Monte Carlo restaurant near the Yard de Triomphe before, and that's very similar to a bit like Flunch where they have to pick um, like a starter and a dessert, uh, a starter main or a dessert or two of them. Um, and that works out quite well. We have done McDonald's, not that we should really promote it, but, you know, we have done McDonald's as well. And that's quite nice for them to see what it's like in, in a different country. Um, and then I think I, that was you that put Shakti shut, shut yes. on the end. So I'm going to say that um, when I, the ones that I organised were really on a shoestring. The I, idea was that this was something that the students could, all, could, could just about afford. Mm. And I went for a model where I organised everything and as far as the food was concerned, the idea was, well, they take their money and we'll go to somewhere and then they find places where they want to eat. And it was something which was really a cause of a lot of stress. So if you can afford to pay a company or afford to make these arrangements, I think that is much better. Um, but Chartier was a lovely place to take them. You have to queue up there. But that's where they get that lovely experience of the turn of the century, of the last century. <laughs> Um, restaurant and they would sit around in different places. That was taking a group of 24 of six formers and year 11s. Um, in terms of things like lunches, uh, so the company IOs are quite good because they, um, so the hotel that we stay at will buy in extra baguettes and then we sort of split the baguettes up and we get the kids to make their own sandwiches. So we literally just go to a, um, a hypermarket and we buy all the fillings buy crisps fruits sort of bulk buying them for for a much uh and it does work out cheaper than eating out particularly mm -hmm. for lunch um i know some hotels will do packed lunches so you can order them but obviously that comes at a price as mm -hmm. well but i think if you're looking to really push the cost down that is a really i think it's a really good idea and it works quite well you can also get them to uh, bring their own little lunch boxes to put stuff in and then they can keep that as they go along and then if they're out and about and they've got free time or if we're sitting down in the in a park or something they can just whip out their food and and, and eat it that is such yeah. a good idea which i never thought of so yeah so that's, that's it's not my idea but it's a brilliant idea and it works very well and then once you've got the kids trained up every day to be honest we're eating ham and cheese sandwiches ham and cheese baguettes for like four days i think we were a little bit like bloated afterwards but it's a really good experience for them to sort of experience fresh the fresh fresh baguettes yeah and also the fact they go to well. shop to buy things for a purpose mm. it forces the language doesn't it mm. so it's really really good um yeah so i think that's all the bits on the itinerary um helen's got say that in the chat steve is waxing lyrical about um chartier <laughs> and do you, uh, steve do you want to open your video and to say the things that you were saying there about an optimum number Here comes Steve. Um, well, just Chante in particular, I love um, the. the uh, I've always found that the, the staff in there are particularly uh, happy to talk to the kids about what they're eating and get encouraging them to order something 
you know very french off the menu that they might not otherwise do um but also if you're not familiar the drawers around the the side of the venue you, you know that the the cutlery kept in there for the the well-to-do of the area that would come and keep their cutlery in there um and have their own cutlery brought to the table for them which i i think is lovely i've not come across it in this country mm -hmm. um no just in terms of uh group size sarah i'm saying taking 50 next year there's there's um just to be aware that certainly since um, Brexit, co there's obviously fewer coaches going mm -hmm. into Europe now, fewer drivers. Um, those that are going are more expensive because there's fewer of them mm -hmm. and fuel's more expensive and so on. Um, and I saw someone was taking two drivers as well, which, again, you know, it adds to the convenience and flexibility and and helps if the driver's ill or anything. But um, it adds to the cost as well. But with the with the group size, once you go over 49, which is kind of the most common uh, capacity on the on the coach, and that's assuming you're going to fill it, which mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't give you a lot of scope for the kid that's ill or whatever it might be. Um, uh, it, it, yeah, coach prices kind of rocket um, because there's even fewer, and it's you can get up to about kind of 60 odd on a single decker. Um, but there's there's few and far between, and then you start hitting double deckers, which are just not that fun to travel on, in my opinion. No. <laughs> I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. That, that was all for me. There was some <laughs> very helpful. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I want to take fifty is because our cohort for year ten is much bigger than I've had previously, and I just wanted, to, and they all seem to be. In, I sent them all a form. I said, "Oh, do you want to come?" And I had I had about forty six come back to me saying we want to go, and I was like, "Okay, that's not committing to it, but mm. there's interest." So it's obviously I've done up to 40 before and that's OK. Um, it obviously means that I have to take an extra member of staff as well. So you've got to think about the budgeting around that. Um, but hopefully it will work out. So I'm in the early, early stages of doing the next one now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so Helen's uh, shared a few like examples of an itinerary. So things that uh, you can include when you're sharing with all stakeholders really uh and obviously yourself so you can keep an eye on what's going on um i think that the next one is a more detailed example this is really just showing if yeah. you're doing it yourself which i was mm. i really did work out all of the routes including the metros i mean it was quite a hairy experience doing this but i must say that the kids learned an awful lot from doing it we went i had enough staff the staff rate to pupil ratio was good you know at least one to eight students um, and we had all sorts of rules for if we got lost, but it did mean they got to use the metro and understand how mm. to get around that sort of thing. But it did need this level of of detail. So, yeah, it looks really detailed. <laughs> be much easier to do. Yeah. Job. <laughs> yeah. Um, so things to consider for pre trip. So obviously, your cost costing is your is your first thing. So obviously, I'm I'm in the process of doing the all the costing, uh, thinking about travel, entry fees. If you're planning it yourself. That was every single aspect of the trip you need to consider, um, which is why I sort of err towards using a company where they kind of do most of that for you. They give you a ballpark figure and then you work with all the extra costings that you put on top of it before you sort of advertise to the students. Um, a lot of schools need to build in things like cover costs as well. Um, I try and reduce cover costs by going over a weekend, but that's sort of relying on the fact that some people want to give up their weekends um, give up their holidays and things like that so I tend to go in the last week of term before half term so we leave either on the Thursday or the Friday or the end of term and then we go over the weekend and we come back in the first couple of days of the half term um, so that means we only have one or two days of cover costs to sort of consider uh, which is quite nice um, the schools that I've worked in where I've actually tried to plan trips um, taking support staff is also a really good thing to do so they don't tend to cost to cover um sometimes no cover yeah no cover costs at all um so yeah uh also contingency uh costs for emergencies in case anything goes wrong um and then some schools will have their online payment there's a surcharge so i know for, for us we use something called wise pay and there's a two percent charge on everything so i'd have to cal calculate the full cost and then work out two percent and then add that on um and that's obviously an extra charge that we would have to have to cough up for um, then obviously you can do your booking, your travel, accommodation, organisation or the itinerary, 
uh, either by yourself or the travel company can do that for you. You've got to think about risk assessments. Some provide risk assessments. Some you'd have to think about risk assessments. So like particularly if you're on the ferry, coach, all the different sort of um, activities that you plan to do, you'd need to have a risk assessment for that. Um, thinking about any medical needs. So have you got any allergies? Allergies is a really big one now. Uh, making sure that the kids have got epi, you've got to take epi pens and all that kind of stuff. Um, they might be vulnerable students. Have you got risk assessments for those vulnerable students? What would they do in certain situations, depending on what 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 their needs are? Um, and then obviously you probably will have an EVC, which is an educational visits coordinator, um, who you would liaise with, fill out the paperwork, and they would check over the paperwork and say, well, okay, this is missing, or you need to do this as an extra or maybe even suggest a few things if you're unsure uh particularly if you've not run a trip before they're quite they're useful people to get to know and um ask for help um from um and then obviously once we've thought about that you've also think about your letter to parents so there's an initial letter that goes out telling them what they'll be doing how much it will cost um also telling collecting key information so passports um, and obviously uh, the health insurance card, so the GHIT card. Um, also, if you've got certain students that don't have uh, non-EU passports, it's also worth checking um, what they need to be able to get into France, um, et cetera. So I took um, a student from India uh, last year, and all you had to do was have a letter, uh, a headed letter from the school, uh, to say they were on a school trip and I think they did actually ask me for um, a whole student list uh, to get her through immigration going out uh, to France as well so that's worth checking obviously with the embassy uh, to make sure what the end what the end the um, what the entries are in terms of immigration and things like that um, and then obviously staffing it's whoever you think's best for the trip. So I've obviously taken from some French speakers before. So obviously myself as a French speaker, I normally take another French speaker with me. Um, often the other French teacher teaching the other group. Um, you can take teachers across curricula. So that's quite useful as well. Um, experienced trip staff. So those who have taken trips before or knowing certain members, uh, certain students that are going on the trip. If you think that you might, you might need support with that. Um, obviously your first aider, take a really good first aider. So I have, I tend to take people, so I am first aid trained, but I don't want to be a first aider and trip leader. So I take, take an extra person that can do the first aid and keep, keep an eye on that as well. Um, and it's quite useful for the trip leader to sort of delegate uh, particular tasks, particularly when you're actually out there and you need people to do things for you um, as well. Sure. Um, course, there we've got on that. Jennifer and... Um... And also, Steve, you've got some ideas on that. Is that okay, yeah. Jennifer? Yeah, just one thing that I did last year. Uh, last year, for the first time, I organized a Year 7 France and Spain trip. So I was taking 45 Year 7s to two different countries. And because it was eight days, it was a long time, Year 7s, obviously the parents were also worried. So what I did, uh, and because also you can't, you know, we have to think about GDPR and, and all sorts of things. So I created a constant form just to ask the parents that they were happy for me to take pictures of the kids, but also to share it. We had like a, a, a chat with all the parents using obviously the school mobile phone. So I could send some pictures, but I did ask for consent beforehand. So they were all aware with that. So obviously, I also do a year 10 Paris trip. Year 10, I don't do that because they're a bit older, but because year seven, they are you know, a lot younger, mm. uh, it's something that maybe people want to consider. Yeah. Yeah, I know our school, we collect consent and it's all stored on our on our MIS. So we can literally just pull it and then we've got a list of students that we can't take pictures of or share pictures of anyway. So some schools do that and that's quite that's quite a useful thing to do as well. Um, was there anything else? Um, Steve, do you want to say what, you, what you've written? Um nothing special really um just uh but i forgot what i've written uh <laughs> oh just that when you were mentioning the list of travelers for france um i think there's a bit of a misconception that that can work elsewhere in the eu but it's a bilateral mm -hmm. rate between france and uk so just a heads up to anyone who's hearing that and thinking they could drop into spain with the list of travelers it doesn't work so and yeah, it's just on Paris. the 
it yeah. was just on the border going into France. <laughs> yeah, just it only works in France. And I know you're talking about France, so but I just thought I'd flag that. Um, okay. And the other thing is just for next year, because, you know, there's not a lot of planning involved in trips, is there? It's like, you know, 20 minute job. They've thrown in the Etias <laughs> and the entry exit just to, um, you know, keep you on your toes. So, um, yeah, I would suggest uh, taking oh. advice on that one. I won't try and go into it now. It's long and boring and hard. So, yeah, it's they haven't really decided what's that. happening yet or how to apply it. Um, no. It might get kicked down the road as well with any luck. So, but right. just something to heads up, I would definitely do it early if you get the chance. Thank you. And I think, and just one thing on all of these, at our AWR London January event, people are really keen to see examples of what people have done. So one thing we thought we'd do is on this web page that we're, we're going to dedicate to this, we could post what we've done, you know, anonymized versions perhaps of what we've done or what others can offer, um, always with the proviso that this is dependent, you know, you can't use, you, you've got to really check, as you said, Steve, you've got to check at every moment, is this still valid? Mm. But it might help just getting a format. I mean, you know, chat GPT is, is, is pretty good, at uh, giving you some ideas as well as to what you can write in things it seems to be pretty much up to date but you you know really sure are you but certainly that's something which we thought that we would share is that okay anybody got any other comments about this this these things all right should we carry on yep carry on okay so the next slide is all about promoting your trip so um obviously um my previous school i never actually got a trip um to go out because we didn't have enough students that were vis uh, that were wanted to go so the viability just didn't work um so it depends on the context of your school um people always worry about prices of things obviously with the cost of living and all that kind of stuff as well so for me i think i say later on is try and um advertise as early as possible so, and then obviously split up into installments to make it a little bit more affordable um or, or for parents to be able to afford the installments and save up for it um in terms of how you can sort of persuade just persuade students to go along, you think about assemblies, uh, your posters or displays around school, sending letters home, uh, promoting directly with classes or going into lessons. Helen's got some slides at the end of this presentation um, that people could have a little, little look at and maybe um, take a few ideas from that. And then obviously for me, I think what's worked really well is obviously if I've had a really successful trip, the older students tell the younger students and they get very excited. Um, so obviously this is the third year that I want to run it this year and they already know about it because the students from previous years have gone, oh, it's a really good trip because you do this, 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 this. And actually when we were promoting at um, year nine options evening, they were also talking about, oh yeah, you get to go to Paris. It's really, really good. You take French. That's one of the really good things that you you you, you get from, from, from taking French at GCSE. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's a few ideas of helping sort of to promote it as well. Um, I don't know if anyone else has got any other ideas or suggested any ideas in the chat before I move on to the next bit. It's certainly, yeah, I think you've covered so many mm. things, but definitely this word of mouth and yeah. telling people well in advance. And I, I just found, for example, to do with the exchange, French exchange, which I had to do in Paris, the year when I took them to the Stade de France, they knew it was every other year you did the Cité des Sciences or the Stade de France, and the Stade de France was just so popular. And mm. I would have very nice, particularly boys, saying, you know, I'll be honest, the main reason I'm here <laughs> is <laughs> they enjoyed it. So definitely finding out what the children enjoy so you know that they're going to say to others, oh, that's really good. Okay. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Um, then obviously information prior to the trip. So you would probably think about having an information evening or an information meeting prior to the visit. Um, I What I've done is I've done um, a meeting with students at lunch um, and then I get them to do their, their roomings at the same time. So at the hotel. So obviously I get them to either pair up or into threes, depending on what the rooming's like. And this is obviously a couple of weeks prior to the trip. Um, and actually at yeah, the meeting, you share your expectations. Um, the code of conduct I would normally do before that. So I would get it put on a Microsoft Forms, send it out to parents. I would do the same when I'm collecting passport details and GHIP details. And then obviously for GDPR reasons, you just say you're going to delete all the information straight after the trip. Um, so obviously that give, keeps you covered as well. Um, also in the meeting, we talk about things like health and safety, uh, things to be keep an eye out on. So things that you might have reflected on in your risk assessments. 
but obviously you would remind them when you're on the trip as well on each aspect of the trip that you would do. Um, I also include a packing list, what to bring, what not to bring, obviously bringing things at your own risk, etc. cetera. Um, and then obviously rooming and your student groups as well. So um, what I tend to do is I would do the rooming so you know which friendship groups are together. And then from the rooms, I would allocate the rooms to a member of staff. And for that is quite useful just to count students. So I'm for, I was forever counting students onto a coach, but then when we were meeting up, they would meet up with their particular member of staff and then we would just check everyone was there and it was a quick way um, sort of to make sure that everything everyone was there and everyone was accounted for. Um, and then what I would do after the meeting, so if you had an information evening and you didn't have anyone, uh, if you had certain students that didn't turn up with their parents and they didn't have the information, I would just follow it up with an email and send all that information out so that it's completely clear on, you know, where they need to meet, what they need to bring. Um, and if they have any questions, they can always follow up, even if they don't make the meeting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like your idea. And I, that, I think that Tim Crapper at um, our January event talked about this use of Microsoft Forms mm. for getting response from parents. Yeah. And I, that, I thought that was such a good idea. The idea that rather than just giving out pieces of paper, which you just hope that they're going to read, something where they are more or less acknowledging that they have read things um so yeah. a really good really good idea chasing up them is 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 quite is quite a feat though <laughs> chasing up payments and then chasing up forms i did a lot of that last year um but it's what you have to do to 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 make sure everything runs really smoothly um okay and then yeah. any other ideas from people about information evenings or by the way kirsten has said that to promote um she has students talking in um, their Languages Week assembly. I like the idea of a Languages Week. Perhaps you might like to tell us what that is, Kirsten, if you can open up your um, your video and speak to us. But And they'd use that to promote the trip they've been on. It's, as you say, that idea of word of mouth, but there you're presenting people in assembly. Great idea. And then Steve has put an online evening for students and parents, parents and carers. Yep. Good idea. So you can find out about it. And they don't have to come into school, so that's quite nice as well, yeah. That Good would, idea. Yeah. And offering it in the evening means that parents and carers can see firsthand. So, Steve, you're saying for that, that would be... Actually, the promotion of it can be done that way, or the... Well, both, actually, I suppose. You could promote it, couldn't you? Come along and find out what it's about and then have the evening there as well. So, yeah, promotion particularly, Steve is saying. Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Right. Uh, then Ellen has shared something for health and safety. So um, it's information uh, of things, reminders of things, and from various parts of the trip, etc. Um. Yeah, that's the sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Share afterwards. There's some things if because I think I've noticed Sarah that sometimes you'll say, obviously you'll do this. Yeah, but you don't think no, about exactly. it. Yeah. It's not always obvious, and it's sometimes. Yeah things through mistakes so it's good to be able to read what yeah. I'm and think oh yeah that's a good idea that's what I yeah do. I mean I pop it in a powerpoint with all the key points and then they can see it as you're talking through it yeah. and that works quite well yeah um, I'm quite happy to share that actually that powerpoint if people want the powerpoint of what what kind of things I put in yes so I can share that later yes that would be really good yeah um I'll take out all the key information that the the, the obviously random number I put numbers obviously mobile phone numbers as well so like we've got the school mobile phone number that I get them to put on their phones before we even left so then we don't have to faff about with it on the coach um yeah okay uh and then obviously getting ready for the trip I think I've talked about this before so booking your tickets in advance uh where possible um I've toyed with the idea of this next one but I have never got around to doing it so it's actually thinking about a booklet to provide to students uh, to accompany different activities on the trip. Um, I was thinking about it last year and I never got around to doing it because it was just so busy. Um, so, yeah, that's quite nice. Maybe when we go around different places, get them to look for different things um, just to keep them on their toes rather than just enjoying the sights as well. Um, food we've discussed already. So bring along something to put put uh, sandwiches in for lunch etc or just food in general they like to bring their own food on the way out anyway so that's quite nice for them to 
continue using 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 um sandwich boxes and things like that uh booking evening meals like i said before toilet stuff best, best places to stop so obviously um a lot of the places that i i sort of booked in there was they always have a toilet stop so you always tell the children to go to the toilet anyway because otherwise you'll get on this you'll get on the coach and like oh, i need the toilet and then they'll have to use the toilet on there um and then the one thing i found really useful is i have a trip folder so i print off everything that i need and i put it in one folder so you've got all your risk assessments list of students um i didn't print out the passports or anything i just kept them on on my one drive and then if i ever needed them i could always just whip them up on my phone if i needed them um and then all your first aid your emergency contact details and things like that so it's all in one place and i did create a second folder uh for the first aider as well and then obviously i shared with all the other stuff with um, the staff in advance. I just shared shared my folder with them with all the information that they ever needed with all the risk assessments and stuff in advance. They can have a look at that um, at, in their own time prior to the trip. Um, and it does come in quite handy, especially if they if people ask you for a, a group list at some point, you can just have a couple of copies out of that ready um, if you ever need them. Yeah. Yeah, you know we've got comments here. Kirsten has added to the food bit, having a refillable water yeah. or drinks bottle. Yeah, would be a good idea. I think a lot of students do that anyway, don't they? Yeah. Um, and this has said there's an app called Paris Toilets, which which you can download and it tells you where they are. That sounds brilliant, Fliss. <laughs> Remember that for next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All good. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and then. This is from Helen as well. So we've got uh, booklets available to download. Oh, so this is going back to your booklets to, to keep them busy. Yeah. You can see, I mean, I just went over the top with the booklet. It goes up to page 47. And I'll be honest that some kids hardly looked at it. However, I find when you've got a group of, I don't know, we had about 24, 25 of these year 11, 6 women, some of them really are looking for things to do on the journey. And it was just such a pleasure to see children looking through the booklet and reading things. Um, I mean, I chose, because this is year 11 and 6, when I did quite a lot of things in French, my idea was that if ever we got caught at any point, I've got tons of reading comprehension in there. And I did do activities for everything, practically everything we did, there was an activity. Mm. And we didn't always do it, but it was just there for those people who wanted to do it or as a backup if we needed it. And I included in it as well little games and things for them to do on the journey, a place mm. to write their diary. Always had this idea that they would then fill in the diary and hand it in. I didn't always chase them up if they didn't. No. But for some students, that was something they really enjoyed. And because I did it in February, just before the GCSEs in May, June time, there were some who really were motivated enough to be able to fill it in and get it marked. And I even, even included in the booklet some um, role plays and picture cards <laughs> for kids I forced them to do on the Eurostar they took it in turns to come and sit next to Miss Myers to do these things I mean I really was packing a lot into Saturday Sunday and Monday of February half term so anyway those are available and I'll pass links so that if there's anything anybody wants to plunder from that if you find it useful it's there oh and Kirsten has given us the the Paris Je T'aime is that where you get the toilets app Oh, no, Kirsten's given us another one, parisjetem.com. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then I think I just had some tips. So obviously checking, obviously I have a school phone, check it's got credit and it does support EU roaming before you leave. Um, I had a bit of an issue this year. I thought there was credit on it. And then when I tried to text a student or call a student, I couldn't do it. So I had a bit of a, a sort of a struggle to try and top the phone up when I was in Gardu Nor waiting for a student to arrive on a Eurostar um, this year. So I had to sort it out myself. It, it was fine in the end um, so that the students and parents and carers could actually um, contact us uh, in case of emergencies or if there was, you know, if we're trying to find a student or, you know, I think we lost a student in the Musée d'Orsay and we're trying to locate them. And then they texted back, said, oh, I'm fine. I'm in this place. So we had to then find the student. So it's quite useful for that. Um, I always say bring your get them to bring their passport and GHIC on the day of travel at the meeting point and they can't get on the coach without showing us where, where they are. So that's a good way to try and get them off the students on that day. Um, I have these little zipper wallets that I buy and I give each um, group uh, staff member 
um, a copy of that. And then obviously they have a copy of their group as well. So they all take the passports and the GHIT cards and just chuck them into the zipper wallets. And that's worked out quite well. I think this year when we went, or last, last October when we went, because we went on the ferry and we went through, um, it's not a uh, piano, it was D DFDS. They um, ask you, but you can actually scan them in advance. So then they don't have to sit at check-in scanning all the passports. Mm. Um, so we were just on the, um, the coach driver's phone, just scanning passports group by group before we even got to Dover. And obviously to, to we went to Dunkirk instead of Calais. Um, but you would do that in advance and it just saves time particularly at check-in um so that's quite useful as well and obviously with with the passports once you're in France you don't tend to use them anyway so we just sort of locked them away and kept them safe and then obviously when we came into immigration we just um hand them back out as and when needed so it was quite useful um and then sharing updates um obviously we've spoken about um permission photo permission so making sure you've got photo permission beforehand uh posting photos onto x twitter whatever you want to call it now or Instagram, um, and then some people have blog posts and then school web website updates. So I have my own department one that I share and then I tag the school one and they retweet it and then that goes out to more people, um, which is what I've done in the past. Not tried with Instagram yet, but I prefer Instagram myself. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else? Got Any other things on the trip? Kirsten, yes, on the business about needing passports, Kirsten, yeah. do they need passports for any of the visits? <clears throat> I've not needed to use them. I haven't. I've I've had that problem on a French exchange where I kept everybody's passports and then one boy was being taken to a football match at the Stade de France and he yeah. needed it. Okay. But I haven't needed it. Any, I don't know if anybody else has had that, um, needed that, because you feel that would be quite risky to be carrying around yeah. passports wouldn't you Can't, yeah you just yeah you know, i mean the first parish trip around with newstead on the way back we gave the passports out to the children and one of the children managed to drop it on the coach yeah and then before they got off when they got off the coach you realized they didn't have it yeah so I it was it, any so, time you, you try and take it off them as soon as you can because it yeah. wouldn't go and i lose things as well but yeah. It'll go down the back of things, won't it? It literally went on its side. It was in a black um, case and it fallen right next to the bracket where it joins onto the floor. Yeah. And that was black as well. So no one saw it. <laughs> and then we found it. So it really good advice from Steve. Yeah. And I have had this experience, dare I confess, where, yes, if you keep an image of the passport on the phone, yeah. that will satisfy most situations. Yeah. So that's why I, this time round, I got them to send <clears throat> a copy of their passport uh, by forms. And then obviously that's all safe to my OneDrive and then I can just show them. That's and why I did it this time around. That the students yeah. themselves. Oh, I see. Oh, they can do that as well, yeah. And then they, they'd have that. So, um, and then another comment, who, somebody else asked this. Oh, yes, Kirsten. Who Anybody, by the way, you can open up and say these things, but Kirsten said that Snapchat's very useful for locating lost students because they've all got each other as <laughs> well. Yeah. That's a really good idea, yeah. And I think for most of us, I mean, we haven't talked about that, um, I think most of us now just do allow these um, phones, don't we, on trips now, because it is, it is for a safety reason, really. You decide when they're allowed to use them. You might well say you're not allowed to be playing at a certain time, but it is really helpful. Um, and then, Jennifer, you've asked about, has anyone used the food voucher on the ferry? And Kirsten yes. said yes. Yes, definitely. Oh, the free meals, very yes. Value. They're actually really good. I do like them. Yeah, you can have like a if you go in the morning, you get a a, a full English, and they're very good. So D, DF, DFDS do do that. I don't know about PO, but the times that I've gone on DFDS, you get a free meal voucher there and back. So on the way back, we got dinner. Mm. So we didn't have to worry about it. Good idea. Yeah, definitely. And another comment from Steve is on the student phone. WhatsApp has a share my location mm -hmm. that you can use really good idea mm. and they can share their location 15 minutes and you can track them if they're lost or just see where they are and find them <laughs> my, my husband can always see where i am because i lose my phone so that works out really well <laughs> anything where you can track people but no i'm sure you've never lost anyone steve you yes that's good <laughs> okay yeah um and then my next slide is just 
stuff that I've just dis sort of discussed already. And um, the main thing with the ferry is maybe thinking about whether you want to go to Calais or Dunkirk. Dunkirk's a little bit quieter um, in terms of getting people through. If you're going home, um, it's a lot. It's a lot quicker to get them through because Calais, they all go through Calais, and then you've just got coach after coach after coach going through um, immigration. Uh, so it just take it does take a while. Um, so this time around, we actually went through Dunkirk. It's a little bit further on the coach to get to Paris and it's a little bit I think it's a little bit further it takes longer to get there but it's not much of a difference but if you want to save time um, it's worth thinking about as well um, talked about lunches already um, obviously talked about cost of living as well and then obviously depending on what what you fancy doing so you want to self plan to really sort of hone in on the different things that you want to you want to we want to visit or using a travel company but I will shop around so I mean, even this time, I I, I had to shop around because they I had to show value for money um, with our trust. So I had to sort of ask a few companies for a few quotes just to compare with what I what I've had what I've had in the past and what what they're offering now as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I, my next slide just says questions. <laughs> and there is a question. And, and we... then you've got lots of other slides after that as well. We've, well, that, that was that people can look at after. Yeah. But thank yeah. you ever so much, because I realise that we've had about three people who had to go during it, and I know that people are going to be watching this anyway on on catch-up. Felicia's yeah. just had to go. Um, Kirsten just says, any recommendation of companies? Um, so, I mean, Steve, if you want to tell us what your company is, that's fine, and we'll be happy to include um, anybody else who watches this afterwards. They can send their details and tell us about the companies they use. Uh, that's very kind of you. Um, I won't keep you long, but we we work uh, predominantly with language schools. So we do a lot of work with language school in the morning and then tours and activities in the afternoon, um, which do full uh, a lot of parallels between what, what Sarah's been talking about and, and the activities and the destinations and so on. It takes a lot of the um, stress off the teacher because there's people there to deliver on the ground, you know, guides and uh, so on um and we also do you know residences and and host families as well in in specifically in relation to paris um so yeah a few different things but also something you may be interested in for your sixth formers we provide work experience in paris um and and across france germany and, and, and spain uh and we have groups that will come out with sometimes mixed groups they might have a you know a year 10 trip and just have a small number six or eight sixth formers that are looking for uh, work placements during the day um, so they kind of have a, a more uh, grown up slightly more independent experience uh, whilst they're also traveling with with younger ones it's another way of, of, of capturing that so we do but we, everything we do is tailor made so you know we're happy to entertain conversations of mixing younger students older students um, language school work experience tours a bit of everything really um but our company i should probably mention is, is blue stamp travel right. uh, so you'll find us on all the socials and and, and blue stamp travel.com not not too hard to find thank you very much and if you want to leave a link in the chat and then we'll publish yeah thank you that as well that sounds great because yeah i mean you've, t you've everyone's heard throughout this that i think sarah's been using a company i did it on my own to make it cheaper but it's definitely more stressful and if my own feeling is if people can afford it, a company makes it less much less stressful. And there's a lot of emphasis since COVID. A lot of trusts won't allow travel without um, without a tour operator because yeah. an awful lot of schools lost a lot of money over over that time. Um, and it is just kind of moving the 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 risk to someone else. Um, and yes, there's a cost to it, but you get an awful lot of backup. And uh, we were very proud to say that not a single school lost a penny uh when when you know traveling during covid and every single group that was booked with us uh over the following two years came back to us after covid so yeah we were quite pleased with the relationship we had with schools over that time yeah. uh, oh sorry one more thing we work with individuals as well um so if you have just a single student that wants to travel um and they that you're not running school trips or you've got older students or you're running a trip for year 10 but not year 11 or whatever it might be um we work with uh individual students so whether that's summer camps or intensive courses or what we call a work and study where they go to language school in the morning work placement in the afternoon um in paris but elsewhere too 
Okay. And could I ask you, is Blue, I want to know this, is Blue, are you uh, an AWL corporate member? We uh, we are not a corporate member. Uh, right. Become or, a corporate member. <laughs> <we're, we're, laughs> in fact, I... Because then... We, that would yeah, be sorry. Sorry. What, what, just to say, we, we, we attended one of your events a couple of years ago. Mm. Uh, and, and we've had conversations about this uh, previously, but we're not a corporate member at the moment. Right. Well, I urge you to join because I mean, third it, noted. it is a way of um, of reaching people as well. But it's been of really course. thank you very much for all the ideas that you've given us. Pleasure. We'll put we'll put the advert on our on our page. We'd love that. Thank you. Sarah, do you want to talk about the company that you've used? Um, so the company I use is called Connect Studies. So it's not um, one of the big ones. So we've got the big ones like NST. Um, I think Voyager is another one that I checked prices with this time round. Um, so Connect Studies is actually a much smaller company run by an ex-head of department. So really well established. I think she's been running the department, for, uh, running the company for about 20 years now. Um, really good value for money. Um, and she does do a lot of the risk assessments, she does provide a lot of the risk assessments for the um, different activities that you do. Um, so the only thing that I had to do this time around was do a ferry risk assessment, which didn't take me very long at all. Uh, but she had all generic ones that get that get renewed, that, that get reviewed quite often as well. And she also makes sure that she sends a she, she sends a tour director with us as well. So every step of the way, um, they deal with all the bookings, they deal with all the money, um, paying for things, etc. So that's kind of taken out of my hands. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that for me, it's taken a lot of stress out of it. So all I have to do is just make sure the kids are up in the morning. Um, where they're supposed to be, they understand what what time we have to meet back and that kind of stuff. Okay, so, yeah, highly recommended. <laughs> Anybody else, Jennifer? Do you do your own, or do you are you using a company, or Kirsten, or Samia, or Elizabeth? Anybody who's here at the moment? Uh, no, well, for the last year and this year, we are using a company, and it's called Adventure Travel, mm -hmm. and again, it's a smaller company. Um, so we were, I, I mean, you know, you have to look at all the different companies and you go with also what is the most uh, cost effective for, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the pupils. Um, mm -hmm. and last year it was the first time that, you know, we've used them and I was really, really pleased, uh, you know, with their service and everything that, you know, I've asked. And it was the first time that I was also doing one trip, but going to two different countries. So I was a bit worried about that because well <laughs> because of the complexity mm -hmm. of the trip you know uh, itself and we've just been fantastic so we decided to use them again this year not only for the France and Spain trip but also for the Paris one right and if you could find link because I've just looked adventure travel there seem to be quite a few companies called adventure travel so if the one you use if you give us a link and then we can of course yeah yeah and then oh yes and then we use because Halsbury they are um AWL corporate members I think PGL schools into Europe so again we could we could list couldn't we have all of these people because almost perhaps to have companies and the name of someone who would be happy to be contacted um that that would be good I think Halsbury do homes homes um homestays as well don't they so you can if you want to do like the whole exchange thing you could send them out or you could go out there and then they would stay with families out there and then you don't have to worry about doing it back yeah. Um. We find with exchanges that students don't really want to host students back back in the UK, but they want to go and have the experience of staying with somebody else in France. So I think Holsbury have done that before. I know. Um. Before I joined my my current school, that's what they they did. Um. In the French department. Yeah. It's quite nice. Sad though, in a way, isn't it? Yeah. So I know. I love the the exchange to me is the absolute ideal. Mm. Um. Does anybody else want to? I mean. We, I know we've passed the hour. Now. If anybody else wants to add, is there anything else you want to add, Jennifer? No. Okay. No, thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you very no, much. You. Uh, Samia, you're, you're new to teaching. You're here for ideas. So uh, thank you ever so much. I know we've been a small little group, but I think we've been a very good group. <laughs> Lots of ideas. And thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and then we will send this um PowerPoint to you so you'll be able to see some of the slides that um, I've added to the end of it as well and Elizabeth says very useful thank you very much okay so in that case I think I will um, thank you Samia I'll stop the recording now then and um, I what I'll do is I will get in touch with everybody via um, Ticket Taylor 
we'll send you an email probably at the weekend with a link to the recording to the chat um, but also perhaps a document where any any ideas you can feed back or anybody who's not been able to come back come today perhaps they can add as well so that we can have a nice long list and make it a, a little go to a little area where people can go for any ideas about Paris because it's a lovely place to visit isn't it just a mm. fantastic place to go okay I shall stop the recording now um, I've got to work out how to get rid of this. Oh, recording. Stop recording. Are you sure you want to stop? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to.